Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all. In the name of Allah, Jesus Christ, wherever you are, we are grateful to the Father, and our Father who is our source, the maker of all things that do appear and those that are that do not appear that means which are in the realm of the spirit we are so blessed to have him as our father you know many do not might not understand the fatherhood the idea of fatherhood because their experiences in their their own lives might not uh, be the good example to talk about the goodness of this idea of fatherhood but you know God he redefines he defines what it means to be a father and the importance of being a father so and that is where we 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 stand and what we want to know is get it well what does this mean to me that god is my father the fatherhood of god Glory to God forever. Fatherhood of God, very important. Not everybody, not many people are aware of the fatherhood of God. But we should, or we must, understand the fatherhood of God. Is the source. He's the source. I mean, it's so sad that those who are supposed to bear the image of a father never did a good work and so the idea of a father is now distorted itself in fact even the idea of a mother is distorted because of individuals and on a on a higher scale great number of individuals have failed to represent accurately properly the idea of motherhood and fatherhood and so god has to redeem it through revelation the revelation of jesus christ will bring forth the full image of a true father and a true mother so bless the lord for being everything to us because when we say god has been christ has become all to us that is also included because we learned and we saw another image in jesus which you couldn't see anywhere else all right we want to uh, want to talk about something very crucial as well 
um, that serves as the foundation that is supposed to be the foundation that's supposed to serve as a foundation of Christianity of our belief it's a mysterious word it's a misused word misunderstood scary to many but I want to kind of try and demystify the foundation of death. And I want to bring it in a different way because I just want to clearly explain and demonstrate that the foundation of all things was and is in death but since the word death means different things to different people or we'll try and consider the context that I'm using this word so the context is that the foundation of power the foundation of strength the foundation of the miraculous, the beginning of the new life begins, is hidden in death. A victory can be found in death. Success can be found in death. And the death that I'm talking about, we shall soon find out in the scriptures. It is, for instance, a very hard word to comprehend. I'll give you an example. For instance, when you read in Psalms 116, and we look at verse 15, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Wow. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Interesting. Again, precious in the sight of the Lord. In other words, so precious in the presence of God, in the sight of God, the death of his saints. So how do you relate to these two things, death and the preciousness of that death? How can death become precious? How is it possible for death to, to become precious? Is it even logical? Does it make sense? Death becoming precious? Now, first and foremost, I want to remind you here. Because, you know, in, the, in our Christian circles, you know, there is a lot of ignorance that is um, um, a disease. It's a, it's a pandemic. It is all over. A disease of ignorance. So there is a way, for example, when a person ceases to live in this world, and that is called death, that we reading any word that has to do with death, we automatically con conclude what it means even when we do not consider the context. So one of the things that will help us is to contextualize, contextualize these things. 
because we got to go in the Old Testament and see some verses and see some wonderful things in the Old Testament and the New Testament and then we compare, we realize we will end this topic with a good and clear understanding that indeed death is a prerequisite, is important before anything significant happens. In fact, supernatural if you want. Death is not exactly what people think when it comes to the word of God. We have to consider the context to understand exactly what the Bible is teaching us. And so, beginning with this verse alone, it might appear as if the writer is saying that when a saint dies, this way people die, then it is a precious thing to God. So one might uh, think that this is all that he's talking about is saying. So when you die, you should be happy because a saint has died. Well, on one side, I might understand because you mean to say that at least this person knows God, knows Christ. They know where they are going, all right? But on the other side, what is so precious in a saint to die? When a saint dies, what is so precious on a saint? Before God, that somebody has died. So we also have to look at it on the other side, on, from a different angle. So he says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So the death of his saints, the death of his saints, all right, is so precious. Now think about this. What is this death of the saints? Because first and foremost, they're not saying that precious is death. No, they are saying there's a special kind of death and that very death is death or the death of saints. So what is this death of saints that is so unique to them, which is not this ordinary death? So from there, you understand that he's talking about another kind of death that every saint should experience, in fact, and he says this is so precious. And by the way, it's not going to be precious to God only. It's going to be precious to all the saints who die this kind of death. And so this is what we have to look to, up, uh, to, to find out. What is this death that he's talking about? And this death is for the saints. All right, and it's so precious before God. And again, isn't it precious before us as well? Because if we get to understand the, how, uh, what this death is all about, then we appreciate um, the death of of, of the saints and us as saints who also appreciate, who see, who conquer with God, the precious is our death. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I hope I'm making saints that once you understand the mystery, the amazing side of this death that God calls death. Now remember what God calls death. It's not what man calls death. So we're going to deal with what God calls death and the blessedness of it. Because he's saying there's a blessing in that kind of death. So there's a death that is a blessing. And did that, uh, is that known? Uh, I doubt. But Christ Jesus made, came and died. And his death was so significant, it was so amazing, and it's a blessing, it's a mystery, the death of Jesus Christ, because he didn't die, the Adamic death, or he didn't die the ordinary death, he died his death, the Bible talks about his death. So we'll see all that and find out how precious it is to build from the foundation of the death of the saints, which is a different kind of death. Shalom, shalom.